We're analyzing the environmental impact assessment of Encana's shallow gas infill development project. In 2006, Encana, an oil and gas company, proposed drilling 1,275 wells and laying 220 kilometers of pipeline over three years in the Suffield National Wildlife Area. Before the area had become a national wildlife area, Encana had drilled over 1,000 wells in the area. However, now the mineral rights of the land are owned by the province of Alberta and the surface rights belong to Environment Canada. We were interested in this project because of the puzzling idea that an oil company would want to drill inside of a national wildlife area and how it was not rejected at the outright. For our research methods, we looked at the report of the Joint Review Panel, the environmental impact statements that Encana submitted, um, as well as researching further into the history of Encana, the history of the NWA, and jurisdiction rights. We also looked at the issue as a public controversy by looking at different videos and articles. We then separately critiqued the EIA and then went through the Lee Coley review package together to critique the EIS and consulted the principles of best practice of an EIA. The Suffield National Wildlife Area is in Alberta, with the closest area being Medicine Hat. It is one of the largest blocks of uncultivated grassland remaining in the Prairie, Canada, and is roughly half the size of Prince Edward Island. The proposed project was in both the south and north areas of the Suffield National Wildlife Area, where there's existed drilling wells already. The project was referred to a joint review panel due to the potential for a significant environmental impacts and a high level of public concern about the project. The SFB Suffield NWA is unique and nationally significant. The establishment of the NWA recognizes that native prairie grasslands were continuing to disappear at an alarming rate and that it was imperative to set aside a large block of habitat for local and regional benefit. The area is 45,807 hectares with 1,100 known species, 20 of which are listed at the species at risk in Canada. The large size of the SFB Suffield NWA provides an opportunity to protect populations of unique and endangered wildlife. The area was first a Canadian Forces base to conduct air training, but in 2003, part of it became the SFB Suffield National Wildlife Area, owned by Environment and Climate Change Canada, and managed by the Department of National Defence. The NWA is protected and managed according to the Wildlife Area Regulations under the Canadian Wildlife Act. The Department of National Defense has the right to practice and use the land for training. Agreements were made in 1975 to establish the rights to the access of natural gas beneath the Suffield base. Encana is a Canadian energy company. It was formed in 2002 in Alberta when two previous oil and gas corporations merged. Currently, the company's oil and natural gas reserves are all located across North America. Another stakeholder, Environment Canada, is a department within the Government of Canada that focuses on environmental policy, as well as governmental programs for environmental preservation and natural resource conservation. The DND, or Department of National Defence, acted as a stakeholder in the process as a defender of the interests of the Canadian people. The DND acted as the responsible authority for the conduct of the environmental assessment in the project. Members of the Siksika Nation, an Aboriginal group, visited the site and presented a statement expressing their concerns in terms of the project's effect on the environment and infringement on their historical practices. After forming an agreement with Encana, however, the Siksika Nation formally withdrew their oppositional statement. Both parties kept the agreement's contents confidential. In terms of public involvement, there was a 60-day public comment period in 2007 established after Encana submitted its environmental impact statement. The review period was extended by 30 days by the joint efforts of the Minister of the Environment and the Chairman of the Alberta Energy and Utilities Board. And Canada described their proposed project in detail, making clear the method with which they wanted to drill and how many wells they intended to drill. In terms of baseline data, however, Encana drew from a Canadian Wildlife Service inventory taken between 1994 and 1995 in combination with existing information in the regional study area. And Canada did not provide adequate reasoning for their use of the 1994-95 inventory, which is likely outdated. The 10-year gap between the new and old data sources does not provide an accurate baseline environment of the area. No information was collected by Encana about the effects of the drilling on the workers, which was pointed out in the joint panel review. Area 1 was given a C grade as there was a good project, an environment description, and information on waste management. The grade was lowered due to inadequate baseline data. We next identified the biophysical and social impacts. 
The most significant valuable environmental and c components were 48 species, with 20 federally listed under the Species at Risk Act. The impacts of direct habitat loss, habitat fragmentation and alteration, and direct mortalities combined with unfinalized critical habitat by Environment Canada seem to be the ultimate tipping point that why the project did not proceed. As well, Environment Canada, the Environment Coalition, and individual scientists found problems in detail in surveys, such as in Canada, in disagreeing with the recommendation of future surveys, for instance, for the Spag Pibbets habitat. Other than wildlife, vegetation, soils, and wetlands were also of concern. And Canna sufficiently provided detailed explanations of all possible social impacts that would result from the proposed project. Originally affecting the Sisica Nation and their traditional land within the EWA, and Canna reached an agreement with the Sisica Nation solving all issues. There is a low likelihood of human effects associated with the project from any emissions or chemicals. An air quality assessment was also conducted and stated that the air quality or any other social effects would be of no significance to the NWA. The employment rate and money generated from the project is insignificant and modest. The only cumulative impact proposed by Encana would be the long-term impacts on military training and research activity within the NWA. We gave this section an A because they provided a thorough evaluation of impacts and significance. However, Environment Canada, the Environment Coalition, and individual scientists found there were problems in the detail and surveys of the project. NCANA stated that it thoroughly analyzed potential alternatives to the project. However, the corporation stated that the method they had chosen, infill vertical drilling, was the only method that allowed for efficient gas extraction. In terms of alternative means, and Canna considered varying types of natural gas drilling techniques. The corporation settled upon vertical wells as being the most sustainable, as they were the cheapest as well as the most penetrative in terms of depth and effectiveness for reaching the resource underground. They stated that the other drilling techniques were not viable, as they would prove to be more expensive with a lower resource production. With regards to roads and vehicles in the NWA, and Canna considered creating a single primary access route for drilling, though they preferred to be able to build new roads as they were needed. And Canna's recommendations did not satisfy Environment Canada and D&D, and they could not come to a conclusion together. And Canna proposed a very precise timeline regarding the stages of the project. Proposing to stop during extreme weather conditions, Environment Canada worries that the project will be rushed to fit within the time limit. And Canna proposed and outlined three plans that would address the mitigation measures of the project. Although attempted, and Canna's mitigation measures were weak and insufficient. The panel had a lack of confidence in the implementation of these measures. They believe that the pre-disturbance assessment is not sufficient enough to protect the endangered species of the NWA. DND disagreed with Encana's flexibility to select appropriate mitigation measures according to site conditions, weather, and professional judgment. Overall, their plans for mitigation need to be more detailed and address the concerns that had been identified in the environment assessment process. Based on this information, we gave the alternatives and mitigation section of the EIA a D grade. For the communication section, the layout of the EIA was good and easy to navigate. They also included a non-technical summary. We gave the communications portion of the EIS an A overall. However, there was a bias in the EIA in the position to have the project go through while you supposed to remain neutral, but they did lay out the impacts of the species at risk section well. On November 30th in 2012, the Environmental Assessment Decision Statement was issued to Encana. The Government and Council decided that the project was not to move forward as there were significant adverse environmental impacts found that were not justified in the circumstances. The environmental impact assessment process was effective in this project as the significant concerns translated to the project not being approved. The process also had Encana come up with some mitigation techniques such as buffers around wetlands. An effective EIA should have a strong mitigation plan, and we graded the mitigation and alternatives section to have a D grade. Due to the extreme importance of this section, we gave the overall EIA a D grade. In Canada's environmental assessment had data gaps. The impacts on invertebrates were not considered, and some wildlife surveys were overlooked. They also missed soil, groundwater, and geotechnical mitigation measures. They did not include project alternatives because in their perspective, this was not necessary. They concluded that the project in its original state would not affect the wildlife. They went on to state that the refusal of the project was not viable because then the natural gas resource would be wasted or improperly extracted. 
If both in Canada and the Government of Canada had agreed on the terms and interpretations of the 1975 agreement that established the rights to natural gas beneath the Suffield base, the EIA would have been more effective, as they would both be under the same understanding. The Aboriginal consolation was somewhat concealed, as there was an agreement form that neither Encana nor the Siska Nation disclosed, or reason why their opposition statement was revoked. For a more open process, the public should be provided to access to information exchanged in agreements between parties such as the Siska Nation and Encana. <laughs> Pale face, 